once again and welcome back to the channel held dominance anthony here please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you've seen and if you want to see more coming up in this episode why two fijians are looking nervous after their game at the weekend zach hardacre on his future and where it lies and I bring you the scores and reports from the Betfred League One semi-final between Rochdale Hornets and Doncaster RLFC. And we start today with the news that VG International Tane Milne is set to miss the entire World Cup campaign in England due to a potential six-match ban. The South Sydney Rabbitohs winger was sent off for a high shot during the club's 32 points to 12 finals defeat to Benrith Panthers. Milne is facing the six match ban for a high shot on a charging Spencer Lenu in the second half. He was sent off by officials Ashley Klein. Both players came off the field at about the same time and Spencer Lenu let rip at Milne about the incident. It was kind of a terrible challenge in my opinion. On the actual incident, he did receive a, two, a grade 2 reckless high tackle charge by the match review committee and entered an early guilty plea which would see him cop a 6 match ban. Would mean that he will miss the entire World Cup campaign for Fiji. They feature in Group B of the men's group alongside Australia, Italy and Scotland. He could receive a 7 match ban if he challenges and is found guilty by the judiciary but the early guilty plea will probably put pay to that. Milne has won nine caps for Fiji since making his debut in 2017 and represented the side at the World Cup Nines in Australia in 2019. It was a reckless incident but by, on, by no means can we say it was intentional? It's going for the high tackle. He's leaning in. He's not looking at the man. But it's reckless. He does have that band coming. Unfortunately for him, a couple of times he has been involved in incidents which has seen him. Um, shall we say, fall on the wrong side of his club and also the, the national team. Back in 2018, while playing for West Tigers, Tane Milne was sacked by the club for a second conviction of the NRL's uh, an illicit drugs policy. He had signed for a two-year contract with the joint venture, which was only signed in June of that year, of like the year before, and has been terminated immediately with an automatic 12-match NRL suspension to be served before the 22-year-old at the time would be permitted to return to the game. He arrived at Concord after two seasons and 18 games at St. George Elawara and in the, the, the Brewster's lower grades. The West statement said at the time that the first infringement was at a rival NRL outfit, while the club says it provided him with appropriate counselling and support. After the serving that ban, he was given a lifeline by signing a deal with New South Wales ISP side, the Mounties, for the remainder of the 2018 season, and uh, it was understood. It was to help him to get back into a first team training environment with men to play the game. The Mountains deal has no connections had no connections to their NRL affiliate Canberra, which means Milnes will be ripe for the picking ahead of the 2019 season, where he was picked up by the New Zealand Warriors. There from there he went on to play for the Souths. Asking a few people about the Bate's um, chances without the man uh, from the Rabbitohs, they said they're well catered for in the back areas, but it's more the half back areas that they're worried about. But anyway, that's a fan's perspective. But we do know that Milne is potentially going to miss this World Cup. 
on the same weekend in the same game Villarmi kick out the international teammate of Milne has avoided suspension for a shoulder charge on Campbell Graham which will and will play in next week's grand final against the Eels midway through the second half uh, the first half of the Panthers 32 points to 12 win over the Souths kick out barreled over Tane Milne in as a latter readied himself to receive a spiral kick from Nathan Cleary. Moments before the firebrand floored Graham with the hit. Kick Howard's Nat can accept a $3,000 fine for the hit, but will avoid a ban. Our next story concerns Zach Ardaker as he insists he's no closer to knowing whether the grand final was his last in appearance in the Leeds Rhino shirt. Ardaker, a three-time Super League grand final ch Super League champion with Leeds Rhinos, featured in, in the loss to St. Helens seven years after being part of the treble winning side that won at the Theatre of Dreams. The 30-year-old started the season with Wigan and returned to Heading Limited through this season on a short-term deal that expires at the end of November. He has proven to be a key part of the Rhinos' rejuvenation and was arguably the best player in the 24 points to 12 loss to St. Helens. When he made the break, that helped create Crew's leaming score just before half-time. His future is now a source of conversation once again, with the supporters desperate to see him remain at the club moving forward. However, Leeds' salary cap issues have been well documented, and it's understood that no deal is yet to be agreed between the club and Hardacre's representatives. When asked about his future with Leeds following the front grand final, he said, I'm no closer. Everyone thinks I'm telling lies, but it's an ongoing process. I'm pretty chilled about it. There have been important games. My agent has worked in the background and we'll see where it goes. Hardacre left the Old Trafford changing rooms philosophical. It was the first time he's tasted defeat at the Theatre of Dreams having won on previous three visits. It was also his return, his first return since he infamously was stood down before the 2017 showpiece when he was due to turn out for Casper Tigers after failing a drug cat test. When asked about his emotions, he smiled and he said, I was just really grateful for, to be here in the first place given what's happened to me this year. I was happy to be back in Yorkshire playing for Leeds and then we went on this crazy mad run. It's been a great eventful story and just to be here is an amazing task. I'm proud of myself, all the players, the staff and the club really to be here and have a really good dig against the champion team. I'm alright, obviously disappointed we lost but otherwise I'm pretty good. I was just happy to play a game and get my best rugby underneath my feet again. I was really confident with three or four weeks of being back of Leeds, we'd be in the playoffs. We had a really good dig, earned the right to be here tonight, but we didn't win. In a season where he made 22 appearances for both Wigan and Leeds Rhinos, his return has allowed him to reconnect with the Rhinos fan base, who have welcomed him back to the club with open arms. They've been amazing. The first game at Headingley was tremendous when they chanted my name. It's really good. I'm really thankful to be at this club. The fans have been amazing. It's a shame tonight was one too far, but the fans kept chanting our name, singing the team song. It was brilliant even when the game was over. Ardakers did start seemingly play really, really well and took over Reese Martin's boot, uh, kicking the duties in the two games before the finals when he was suspended and converted all of them. So, a good player like Zach Ardaker will not be without saying a club soon, uh, too long. There are numerous clubs looking for fullbacks. 
one team that have just changed their coach as well. We end the episode today by looking at the Betfred League 1 playoff picture as there is only one game left to play to see who gets promoted to the Betfred Championship in 2023. So we came into the tournament with five teams involved. We're down to the last three in the semi-finals. Swinton Lions are the one that automatically go through to the the final due to winning their playoff game that playoff game was against Doncaster and they beat them 32 points to 12 but Doncaster got a second chance as they moved to a semi-final berth against the winners of North Queensland uh, sorry, North Wales Crusaders and Rochdale Hornets which the Hornets came through 36 points to 20 victors the winner of this semi-final game means that they will go on to face Swinton Lions at Haywood Road in the League One playoff final. Rochdale were the lowest ranked team from the regular season to enter this playoff picture. So to get to the semi-finals is a fantastic achievement so far. And could they go that one step further? The Dons middle of the road season to be honest and by their high standards and were looking to press upon so that they could make a tilt at getting promotion both teams know Swinton will stand in their way and they'll be the refresh for the week off but both teams are looking to create a bit of momentum by victory here looking towards that grand final and it was the Dons who move on to tackle Swinton at Hayworld Road on Sunday after they ran away with the game in the second half to win 52 points to 20 after leading just by 8 points at one at the end of an eagerly contested first half. The Dons drew first blood when centre Robbie Storey celebrated his return to action for more than a month out on the sidelines when he spotted a gap 10 metres out to touch down near the enough for scrum half Connor Robinson to convert. In addition to kicking all but one of Doncaster's tries, Robinson also kicked well tactically and in the first half helped his side win the key territorial battle. Consequently, it was the Hornets, so it took the Hornets until the 28th minute to mount their first sustained spell of pressure on the Doncaster line and they made it pay. Winger Daniel Nixon run onto a cutout pass to dive over in the corner with some sick slick handling Hornets joy was short lived though as Robinson found himself in the deep uh, clear deep in, Robin, in Rochdale's half after running at the line and he found former PNG international uh, Jason Talley up in support and he finished strongly to claim his 100th try for Doncaster Robinson took the game out to 12 points to 4 as he converted the try but the Hornets came back as they capitalised on a drop pass just outside the Doncaster's 20 to mount a spell of late pressure but they failed to turn it into points at this point due to Doggy defending with just 8 points separating the two sides at half time the start of the second half was the plan to score first and it was going to be vital. Fortunately for the Doncaster fans, it was the home side who scored first with Hooker Greg Burke darting run from acting halfback, sending Story over from close range for a second converted try to make it 18 points to 4. Hornets looked to have pulled back one try that was needed to get back into the game when Zach Baker touched down under the post on 47 minutes, but the referee spotted a forward pass. The Dons rode their luck and effectively put the game out of reach three minutes later when Sk uh, skipper Sam Smeaton touched down from the close range from Ben Johnson's pass. Robinson added the extras again to leave the Hornets trailing 20 points behind. Watson Boas, who hopes to be back playing at the Eco Power Stadium for Papua New Guinea in the forthcoming World Cup, burst clear to claim Doncaster's fifth try, converted try shortly after the, uh, he came off the bench. The one-way traffic continued with Leeds-bound Leon Ruan 
going over for another converted try. Winger Travis Corian, uh, Corian, who showed good pace on a long touchline tilt, just managed to get over the line after losing his balance after rounding the last line of defence. Hornets did map a hit back again with a try from winger Kean Tyra, who also added the extras, only for Johnson to cancel it out when making a try out of nothing on the 67th minute. Belatedly, showing what they could produce, Hornets scored two well-taken tries by its centre Ben O'Keefe, the first of which was gold by Tyra. Fittingly, however, it was the Dons who had the final word, Tally getting on the end of a Robinson Grubber kick to claim his second converted try. And with that, the scores ended 52 points to 20. So there we have it, Swinton Lions versus Doncaster in the League One playoff final. Both aiming to get promoted to the championship along with Keith Cougars. Who's your money on? Well, with the favourites tag, I would have to say Swinton Lions because it's at their home ground. They have scored the more points than two during the season and they finished higher. So they have got that champion's bias, shall we say? Champion's benefit is a more appropriate way to put it. But don't, there's always a punch's chance. Doncaster could have one of their better games of the season and come out with the victory so it's not cut and dried tell me in the comments below who's going to get promoted to the championship and that's it for another episode ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching please remember to like subscribe and share this video worldwide as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates on new videos that may be coming your way Tell me what your thoughts are on the episode in the comment section below. Who's going to get promoted to the championship? Is it Swinton versus Doncaster? Or any of the other stories that we've covered today? Well, there's a few more that are coming out and that I'll be covering in the future episodes. And the big ones. But for now, let's stick you with these three. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide. And the episode as I normally do by wishing you all the best, so please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.